Welcome, uh, lovely greetings to all our viewers on the news track tonight. We'll be focusing on whether Israel should be negotiating with the hostages. Uh, we've seen the families of the hostages come together, put pressure on the global community, on the government in Israel, demanding that there be a conversation with the Hamas around their release. This is something that Tel Aviv so far has been dead set opposed to. Some of the families of the hostages key representatives from the Israeli government will be joining me on the news track as we bring you all the latest in the Israel-Hamas war coming up on the news track. Freedom now, cries Israel. Children, women, elderly, hundreds in Hamas captivity. Two Americans released. What about others? Should Israel negotiate with Hamas terrorists? Big focus on news track. The Israel-Hamas war has been raging for over two weeks now, and nearly 200 hostages have been in captivity since the 7th of October. Pressure is growing on Israel to negotiate the release of hostages. Over the weekend, the Hamas released two American women giving a faint glimmer of hope to the families and friends of others who've been kidnapped. But what can Israel do next? It has dealt with several hostage crises in the past, but the sheer number of hostages and hostage takers makes this operation mighty complicated. Freedom now! Freedom now! Freedom now! Freedom now! Freedom now! Freedom now! Freedom now is the cry from the families and friends of nearly 200 civilians currently being held hostage by Hamas in Gaza. This is downtown Tel Aviv, the capital of Israel, and it is completely drowned out by the sound of angry Israelis who've collected here demanding justice for the hostages who continue to be in the captivity of Hamas more than two weeks after the dreaded terror attack by that terrorist group from Gaza on October the 7th. Most of those missing were kidnapped from the Nova Music Festival. <laughs> All of these people are asking for a full prisoner deal. All of the people here are extremely angry. And they're saying that the government here has not been doing enough to bring the hostages back. Many of the people here are friends, relatives, classmates, parents, uh, siblings of those who've been kidnapped. They're all holding posters and they're all calling for the Israeli government to instantly, to instantly act Idan is missing since uh, Saturday, October 7, and we haven't heard from him. We, we just had a phone call to his, friend, his girlfriend on Saturday morning, and since then we don't know anything. We want answers. I think the entire world needs to give us answers. All the world needs to understand this is more than a war crime what Hamas did, did there. It's a, it's a crime against humanity and all their leaders around the world need to intervene to, to take action. In Jerusalem, more families of Hamas hostages hit the streets after meeting Israeli president. Among them were the parents of 23-year-old Israeli-American hostage Hirsch Goldberg Pollen. Hirsch's parents were told by witnesses of the attack that one of Hirsch's limbs was blown off by an exploding grenade. We're asking for everybody around the world, Sari Chutz, foreign ministers from the 30 countries where there are hostages, to scream, let in the medical care. We've talked to doctors. The doctors have said, if he gets the treatment that he needs, he has a decent chance. If he still hasn't gotten it, it's a dire situation. He needs surgery. He needs antibiotics. In intensive antibiotics. And we're screaming. 
to anybody who will listen, let in the medical care and bring all 200 of these people home to their families. Hollywood star Gal Gadot has also joined to release the hostages. She's using her social media platforms to post videos of children kidnapped by Hamas. The release of two American hostages has given a glimmer of hope to hundreds of families, but time is running out. With Shiva Roor in Tel Aviv, Bureau Report, India Today. You know, joining me on the news track now, Tamar Schwazbad, uh, spokesperson in the Israel Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, with us also on this broadcast is Ido Heyman. Uh, this is the brother of Inbar Heyman, who's been kidnapped by the Hamas. Let me go across to uh, Tamar Schwazbad, who joins us on this broadcast. Tamar, you know, we're seeing the kind of uh, pressure that's being made to bear by these families of the hostages, they're coming together and trying to tell Israel government to give them information about what's happening, to negotiate with the Hamas, to try and find a way of getting their loved ones back. And this is uh, quite inevitable and totally understandable because ultimately their loved ones have been taken hostage and are missing at this moment. How is the government in Tel Aviv looking at all these pleas and the kind of global attention uh, that these are receiving at the moment, Tamar? So first of all, thank you so much for having me on the program here today. Um, in terms of the hostages, I want to start by talking about a little nine-year-old boy named Ohad. Ohad turned nine today. He's currently being held in the Gaza Strip, not having much of a birthday. He's away from his friends. He's away from his family. We don't know where he's being held. We don't know whether he's alone, whether he's in a dark room. Um, and I want to take this opportunity to wish Ohad a happy birthday, to pray for his release, and also ask each and every one of you to pray to bring him home. Right now, there are more than 200 Israeli civilians being held in the Gaza Strip. We're talking about children. We're talking about toddlers. We're talking about Holocaust survivors. We're talking about parents. And our job and mission in this moment is to make sure that we are able to bring home every single one of those individuals. We will do whatever we have to do and take every measure possible to allow for their safe return. I want to just remind people that when we're talking about Hamas, we're not talking about freedom fighters. We're talking about individuals who are no different than ISIS. You know, a lot of journalists today in Israel um, participated in a private briefing where they saw some of the GoPro footage that Hamas terrorists filmed while going into Israeli communities, executing people left and right, murdering babies, burning people alive. And we have to understand that these are the individuals that we're dealing with. And these are the individuals that people are asking us to negotiate with. So, of course, I don't want to comment too much on negotiations, but everyone should know we are doing everything we can to bring each and every one of the hostages home. You know, I was seeing some of the reports filed by our correspondents on the ground. They were speaking to uh, the families of the hostages who say uh, that the government in Israel isn't talking to them, that they've been left to fend for themselves, which is why they're having to mount their own campaign, that these are our people and the government should do whatever is possible to try and bring them back. So first of all, my heart is completely with the families of these individuals. I understand where they're coming from. I cannot imagine going through that experience myself. These are their children. These are their parents. These are their brothers and sisters. The government is directly in touch with many of the hostages. Um, right now, in fact, many of the families of the hostages um, are currently appealing to different media outlets around the world to garner support to bring their loved ones home. Um, and as I said before, we will continue to do whatever we can can and to work around the clock to make sure that these innocent people are brought home. What do you think of the manner in which two American nationals, uh, two women, were released by the Hamas uh, over the past several hours? It seems to have been done as quite a clever ploy to bring attention to the fact that the others could potentially also be released if there is a proper conversation with the government in Israel laying out conditions. So they're basically trying to up the ante and say, okay, here are some levers that we have control of, the chips that we can play, let's have a conversation. I think that's what uh, the Hamas very cleverly are trying to achieve. 
Look, Hamas is, you know, cosplaying right now as a humanitarian organization. I think the world has seen exactly who they are in the past two weeks. For years, we've been trying to warn the world about the cruelty of Hamas. Um, and I think it's very, very, very sad that it took images of, you know, babies being burned alive and beheaded and shot in their beds for the world to understand that we are not talking about freedom fighters. We are talking about sadistic animals. Honestly, animals is even a compliment. We're talking about sadistic, evil um, individuals who are no different from ISIS. I'm very happy, and Israel is very happy, that two of the hostages have been released. But we also know there are more than 200 individuals who are away from their families, who might be tortured, who have undergone some of the most horrific experiences well beyond our imagination. So Hamas could continue pretending to be a humanitarian organization, but they've proven over the past two weeks that they are no different than ISIS. Let me go across to Yuli Edilstein, Member of Parliament, Chairperson of the Foreign Affairs and Defence Committee uh, in Israel. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, Mr. Edelstein, we're seeing that this uh, hostage crisis and what Israel should do, should it negotiate with the Hamas? We've seen Israel in several instances in the past negotiate with terrorists and try and see how they could bring Israeli citizens back. The big difference this time is that there are 200 plus hostages dispersed in different parts of the Gaza Strip. How are you looking at this uh, big question as the uh, chairperson of the Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee on whether or not Israel should, given the fact that two uh, American women have been released, should it or should it not negotiate uh, with the hostage takers? I think we're talking about two totally different things. Yes, in a barbaric act, Hamas kidnapped, took hostage uh, over 200 people, some of them, by the way, foreign citizens, uh, some of them, it's terrible even to say that, but babies, elderly people, pregnant women, you name it. And uh, we have to do everything in our power to release the hostages. I'm not going to uh, discuss how exactly we're going to do it, but I can promise you that we are doing everything in our uh, power in every possible way to make sure that the hostages come home as soon as possible. Uh, it's uh, quite obvious that Hamas is not a partner for these uh, negotiations. On the other hand, uh, I think that we, uh, if we want to stay alive in our area, we must make sure that Hamas as a military structure stops existing. For that, we are being prepared and we are right now... Uh, we, we've started already the military operation against Hamas. The goals set by the security cabinet of the Israeli government are quite clear. Uh, to get to the situation after the military operation, to get to the situation when uh, Hamas has no military power and no political power in the Gaza Strip. Not easy to reach these goals, but these goals will be reached and the hostages will be back home. Several of the Families of those who have been taken hostage have come together. They're trying to build a movement, trying to rally public support, uh, raising questions around why no one in government is talking to them, saying that they've been left to fend for themselves. Uh, how do you see all this play out, given the fact that in Israel there is a very strong sense of disillusionment with the Benjamin Netanyahu government, where a lot of Israelis feel let down, that their government, their military, their intelligence agencies didn't rise to the challenge and let them all down and so many Israelis died. It's quite obvious uh, to us that uh, we won't be lucky enough to have all the hostages in one place so that we will be able to release all of them through one brilliant military operation of some uh, special forces unit. That's not the case. The hostages have been uh, taken uh, to different places around the Gaza Strip, as you've just said. Uh, it makes it uh, difficult. We are very uh, attentive to what the families of the hostages have to say. Having said that, I think that, that uh, uh, we have to still proceed with the military operation, taking into consideration the fact that we have over 200 hostages there in the Gaza Strip, Hamas 
uh, already started his uh, psychological terror. Um, they already issued statements about the Israeli army killing most of the hostages uh, uh, in the bombarding the uh, through bombarding the, the Gaza Strip. They uh, uh, are playing uh, all kinds of games with uh, all of a sudden releasing a video of this hostage or that hostage. So. Uh, uh, on the one hand, uh, we know whom we are dealing with. I think the whole world, a couple of weeks ago, witnessed uh, what these uh, animals are capable of. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, we have to be very uh, professional, let's put it this way, though it hurts terribly and the heart is aching, but we have to be very professional, professional in our approach to the release of the hostages. And only if we act with, so to say, cold head, we will be able to reach the goal of the release of the hostages. There, Kovalsky joins us, aunt of Roni Ishal, a soldier of the Israel Defense Forces, who's been missing since the 7th of October. Uh, there, Kovalsky, thank you for joining us at a time when, you know, you're obviously so stressed. All the friends and family of Roni Ishal, very, very stressed, quite clearly. Can you tell our viewers in India about the kind of uh, pressure that you're trying to build, the movement that you're trying to build, what is it that you're hoping to achieve, given the fact that two senior representatives in the Israeli establishment that we spoke to in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and a member of parliament said you need a cold head, you need to be brutal to be able to go out and achieve what is required. And this is a time when they think, given what Hamas did, Israel simply cannot afford to be emotional about this. Thank you for having me and thank you for letting us tell our story and um, the world needs to understand that on October 7, a genocide has occurred inside Israeli territory by terrorists, by Hamas ISIS, by murderers with no mercy and soul in their body. In the darkness they came and stole babies and kids and mothers and elders from their beds and took them away to captivity. My personal story is about Roni. Roni is my niece, my dear child. She's 19 years old. She's a soldier at IDF. Her job is to be a lookout inside Israeli territory, inside Israeli territory. And her job is to watch the fence. Her base was burned to the ground and since October 7th at 9.27 exactly, which, we, which she sent a text message to her mother from a different phone that is not hers saying, mommy, don't worry about me, I'm okay, I love you. And her mom answered, okay, sweetheart, I love you, take care of yourself. We haven't heard a word, not from her and not about her. We don't know where she is. We don't know what happened to her. We don't know if she's alive. We don't know if she's dead. We don't know if she's hurt. And we definitely don't um, trust these monsters from the worst nightmare that anyone could ever imagine to keep her safe and to keep her well. And what we did in the family is because the, the, it was so much mess. And, you know, the numbers are terrifying of of the uh, villages that uh, they attacked and the bases and the soldiers and the people and the evacuated, we, for the, se the first 72 hours, we just turned our homes into a war room to find anything about her. Meaning in this process, excruciating process, meaning to watch every movie and every picture that these monsters from Hamas ISIS has released. You don't know the horrors that I had to see that has scarred my mind that I can't close my eyes without seeing. I don't want to go into graphics because I don't think anyone deserves to feel what I felt. But just to find a glimpse of her face. Is that her nose? Is this her fingernails? Is this her hair? Because we don't know where she is. We don't, we don't know who they're hell holding and if they're dead or alive. So we just tried ourselves to find any proof of her whereabouts. After 72 hours that we couldn't find any information and 
you know, the damage and, and the horrors were out, we just decided that um, we have to turn to the international community and to say to you that it's the responsibility of every citizen of the world that is against terror and don't believe in violence and murder of children and babies in their own homes and beds to help us find Ronnie and bring her back. You know, I said she's part of IDF and she's a lookout and you might imagine uh, a soldier, a Rambo, but she's not, she's a 19 years old girl. She likes Taylor Swift and Harry Styles. She has a dog, his name is Doobie. She's a babysitter. This is what she's doing when she's off duty. She loves kids. She has a mother. She has a father. She has younger siblings. And we miss her. We miss her terribly. And we don't know what happened to her. And even if we can't find her, and she is the worst that um, a family member can imagine dead, there are children in captivity. There is a four-year-old girl who is now an orphan because they murder her parents and she's been captured in the Gaza Strip. So the world needs to wake up and understand there is no good terror and bad terror. There is no, the fun, fundamental, the, the, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a bit um, oh, I, excited. Wait, of course. Um, the, those Hamas ISIS, they don't care about the Palestinians. They don't care about you or about the world. They care about staying in their own fanatic opinions in the name of Allah, which is just an excuse. I don't believe that they believe in anything in the world just to, to hold the strip in their hands. This is not a war of Israel against Hamas or Israel against the Palestinians. This is a war of Hamas against humanity. First Israel, then you, then the world. You must, the, your, your audience and your viewers and people of India, I know you know how it feels to, to suffer from terror. And we call you to stand with us. We call you to help us find our families and our children. And my Ronnie, we need you. We need you to support us. You know, we've seen all these um, families of those who've been taken hostage come together. Uh, we also know that the Israeli government has now appointed uh, a group of people to talk to these families. Are you hopeful in the manner in which these two American women were released over the last uh, few days that maybe more hostages will be released in the days to come? I think it's a game. They play games with us. They play game with people's lives. They came in first with the guns, then with the RPG then with the motorcycles, and then with donkeys. They took people on donkeys because it's funny. Some of them released them just after walking the border because they weren't soldiers. They were just people who thought it was funny. It was funny to hurt other people. So Hamas is playing with us, is playing with our minds, trying to show the world or the Americans that they're doing anything we should we shouldn't believe anything i don't believe they they will free i don't think they had planned to cap, to 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 find so many people and to capture so many people so probably they don't even know what to do with them but i don't trust them to do anything human hum, with with humanity because whomever decides to be had to 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 be headed 40 children and babies does not have a soul in his heart. When you kill an infant, a, a, a baby that hasn't been born yet with a knife, you don't have anything in you. When you go into a music festival and you shoot an RPG on people who's dancing, you don't have anything good in you. This is not for the Palestinians. This is not for anyone. Yuli Edelstein, what do you make of the manner in which these two American women have been released? They've been taken hostage by the Hamas on the 7th. The Hamas clearly wanting, uh, as we're just hearing from there, wanting to play mind games 
with the psyche of the Israeli nation and people trying to make it seem that they are not unreasonable, that they are not barbarians, that if you talk to them some solution can be found. So, they are clearly trying to play at different levels on uh, the psychology of the Israeli people and uh, the Israeli nation. Uh, you and it's Steve. because we value life and it's because we take care of our own and it's because we will always bring back our people. Yuli Edelstein, what do you make of the manner in which uh, these three, uh, th that these two women, the American women have been released uh, by the Hamas, they clearly seeming to play mind games showing that they are not unreasonable, that they are not animals. Yuli? Well, uh, I, I think that, uh, uh, as I've said, Hamas uh, as, a, as a terror organization with history, including the history of the kidnapping and holding hostages, uh, will now play all kinds of games, including the release of uh, uh, two uh, women with American citizenship and uh, uh, at some stage uh, talking about, we heard their statements about the possible release on the humanitarian grounds, as if they know the word humanitarian, uh, on the humanitarian grounds of other hostages, uh, pro probably people who are uh, sick, probably uh, foreign citizens who are, uh, according to Hamas, not involved in the war against Israel. But uh, uh, for us, as the, as the state of Israel, uh, uh, we can't be part of these games. For us, there are no Israeli citizens, foreign citizens, citizens, people with double citizenship, we have to make sure that all the hostages uh, come back. And as I've said, you know, it won't be an easy task. But uh, if Hamas uh, believes that they can overplay us in all these games, they are dead wrong. Ilay David, brother of Avtar David, who was abducted from the Nova Music uh, Festival, also joins us. Ilay. You know, this is a very tough time for all the families of those who have been taken hostage. Uh, we are also hearing from representatives in the Israel government who are saying that there is no scope for negotiation. It's not like one soldier being taken captive. There are 200 plus Israelis captive and therefore they believe that uh, Israel just needs to be very cold-blooded going in, finishing off the Hamas so that no one like your brother Evtar is ever taken hostage again by anybody in the Hamas. Uh, yeah, um, I can speak only for my family. Yes. Uh, my brother, my brother uh, is ho held hostage. He saw horror thing it uh, that day, the October seventh. Uh, two of his best friends murdered in that attack. Uh, another friend got kidnapped. I really feel sorry for the people of of Gaza. The citizens there, they shouldn't suffer for what Hamas did. But eventually, for the last decades, Hamas is using innocent people, citizens of Israel, citizens of Gaza. He uses them as uh, tools in his game, uh, political tools to, to, um, to use. He doesn't care if they're dead or alive, if it serves uh, its targets. So I feel sorry for them, but right now, that's something I, as as a brother of someone kidnapped, I shouldn't be, I, I shouldn't care for it. No, I understand your sentiment and your emotions, Ile. How are all the families of uh, the hostages trying to keep their spirits up? How are you all talking to each other, trying to collaborate with each other in trying to find where your relatives could possibly be in the Gaza Strip and see if there's some way of ensuring that they can be brought back? Uh, again, please, the question. I'm saying, how are you all uh, talking to the families of the others who've been taken hostage uh, to try and ensure that you keep your spirits up, to try and ensure that you can find some way of bringing your brother back from Gaza? So, uh, if I understood correctly uh, your question, the government uh, isn't doing much for us. I mean, they try, but... Uh, anything takes lots of time because it's a state and for a state, especially democracy, 
things are going slow um, and uh, everything is new. It's something we haven't seen here uh, in Israel for the last 50 years. It's something new that more than 200 people are being kidnapped, more than 1,300 people are being murdered um, in an instant. So it's really new and, and I understand it and I appreciate what the government is trying to do. But the uh, real, the real comfort that I take the, um, is really from from the uh, there is a civil uh, families initiative, a family forum that uh, is helping each other. Uh, here we act like like a tribe when uh, uh, we are in emergency. So. Um, we really learn about family and we really learn about the power of community and um, uh, and the power of our uh, society. So there is a lot of um, aid from, uh, from other citizens here in Israel, other families. This is a very tough time for these families because their relatives have been taken hostage the Israeli government at this time determined to go out and neutralize the Hamas one for, and once and forever so that no one again ever is taken hostage by any uh, Hamas terrorist. But for those whose family members are currently in the Gaza Strip, this is their worst nightmare playing out. And we try to capture uh, their thoughts, their emotions at this time. And even as families and friends of hostages demand a ceasefire, Israel has declared that it's launched a limited ground offensive into Gaza. Uh, by launching raids that are aimed not just at targeting the Hamas but also searching for hostages who are in all probability spread out across the Gaza Strip. 17 days into the Israel-Hamas war, Israeli Defense Forces have mounted a limited ground invasion into the Gaza Strip. Assault Nakudot. There is a sortie which is attacking dozens of points where, to understanding, the terrorists are assembling. The terrorists are getting organized in anticipation of the next stages of the war. And our role is to reduce these threats. Therefore, we are exploiting all of the time available to us to improve our readiness and our ability to carry out the ground maneuver in the best possible way. Hamas, which carried out the October 7th terror attack on Israel, has also confirmed ground operation by the IDF. According to Israeli forces, raids by tank and infantry forces were done to kill squads of terrorists who were preparing for the next stage in the war. During the night, there were raids by tank and infantry forces. These raids are raids that kill squads of terrorists who are preparing for the next stage in the war. These are raids that go deep to the contact line. These raids also locate and search for anything we can get in terms of intelligence on the missing and the hostages. Israeli forces have claimed that their air strikes focused on sites where Palestinian militants were assembling to attack any wider Israeli invasion. The Israeli army has also organized raids to search for those who have been abducted and are being kept as hostages. Two hostages were released has actually piled on the tension and suspense over what's going to really happen because the big question continues to be if this is phase one, what is phase two and phase three going to look like? Are negotiations really happening where the non-military hostages from Gaza will all be released very quickly? We don't know just yet, but in the interim at least, while that attains a semblance of clarity, Israel is not backing off, not even an inch, not even for a minute. A limited ground operation could be a wider ground invasion of Gaza by Israeli forces. Hezbollah. Israel has said its war on Hamas will end only when the outfit's terror network is completely dismantled. <laughs> With Shavarur from Tel Aviv, Bureau Report, India Today.
Israel, meanwhile, has released raw, unedited body cam footage recovered from Hamas terrorists. The new videos show Hamas terrorists firing indiscriminately at a civilian car, not stopping even when the driver was dead. The Israel-Hamas war has been raging on for over two weeks now. And with nearly 200 hostages still in Hamas custody, Israel has decided to amplify the horrors of Hamas by releasing unedited footage of the October 7th Hamas attack, taken from the death squad's body cameras. As we work to defeat the terror organization that brutalized our people, we are witnessing a Holocaust denial-like phenomenon evolving in real time. In this video from 7th October, released by the Israeli government, Hamas terrorists, all dressed in black, can be seen firing indiscriminately at a silver civilian car. As the car moves ahead, they continue to fire till the driver is dead and crashes into another van. Gun-wielding terrorists then surround the car and check to ensure that the passenger is dead. Abduction manuals and operation plans have also been recovered from the bodies of Hamas terrorists. Hamas terrorists went on a killing frenzy as the October 7th siege unfolded. This video shows Hamas seek out an injured elderly lady and gun her down. This is how the carnage unfolded at the Noah Music Festival. It was one of the first sites that came under Hamas attack on October 7th. Dashcam videos that have emerged show Hamas terrorists blocking cars and shooting passengers point blank. Festive goers who tried to flee on foot were also gunned down. The kibbutz in southern Israel bears testament to the true horrors of Hamas. This was probably a preschool for kids. The doodles and paintings on walls now covered by bullet marks. A play area now eerily quiet. A burnt cycle and a mangled cart is all that is left. These images make it crystal clear that even children were not spared. I've never seen anyone face uh, such slaughter like, like we are animals and you slaughter them and it's not human. It's not humane what they did here. I don't think we've seen anything like this except for maybe ISIS or the Holocaust. Make no mistake, the information war is also raging. An Israeli government's decision to release the footage comes amid ongoing global protest and diplomatic efforts to end the conflict. Bureau report, India Today. <laughs> The United States has deployed a second aircraft carrier and attack ships to the Persian Gulf as uh, Israel prepares to expand its Gaza operations. The U.S. warships are not intended to join the fight, but the presence of two of the U.S. Navy's most powerful vessels is designed to send a strong message of deterrence to Iran and its proxies like the Hezbollah in Lebanon and the Houthi rebels in Yemen. Strikes to punish provocations by the Hezbollah, the Iran-backed group that has carefully scaled up hostilities, opening up a war front on Israel's northern border. Just days ago, a U.S. warship's air defense system intercepted a battery of cruise missiles launched by Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen, south of Israel. What's clear is that in under 20 days, the Israel-Hamas war has exploded into a full West Asian crisis that could spiral into a global conflict. 
The United States of America, which has already deployed two giant aircraft carrier battle groups to the Mediterranean and Persian Gulf, has also decided to bolster advanced missile defense capabilities on the region. In its latest move, the Biden administration has decided to deploy additional terminal high-altitude air defense and Patriot anti-missile systems in the general area of Israel as a shield against an increasingly belligerent Iran. The rushing up of tensions means Iran is on notice, with relations back to square one just weeks after the Biden administration had arrived at an elusive breakthrough with Iran, even unblocking billions in aid. Israel, which has rejected concerns of an expanding conflict, has said it will do what it must to defend itself <laughs> and avenge the massacre of 7th October. Could the world be staring at a new mini world war? With Shiva Roor in Israel, Bureau Report, India Today. Here's wishing all our viewers a very happy Dashera. Goodbye, good night. <laughs>